More than 50% of Americans are either diabetic or pre-diabetic, and it's turning into an epidemic uh, across the country. In fact, a lot of brain disorders are also responsible uh, from diabetes, and that's why we're now calling Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes. So if you're struggling with blood sugar and you're looking for natural solutions on how to turn this around, this video is for you, and we're going to get started right now. Well, hello everyone, I'm Dr. Glenn Harrison, and welcome to this week's segment of Why. This is where we take just a few minutes to answer some of the most common health-related questions that I see in my clinic every day. So I get a lot of diabetic patients coming into my office. They've already been on the medications. The doctor tells them, you know, watch what you eat and get some exercise, but their blood sugar just keeps going up and up. And there's a lot of really inaccurate information about diabetes out there. So I wanna create some clarity just in the world of, of natural medicine and what you can do. So the, the most important thing to, to realize if you're trying to get your blood sugar down is to realize and to appreciate that blood sugar doesn't just come from foods. It actually comes from stress responses as well. Um, you know, there's been lots of research on this where they take two groups of lab rats and one group of lab rat, they give electric shocks, the other group of lab rats, they don't and the lab rats have the same diet, they would be able, due to stress, they would be able to induce diabetes in that one group of lab rats just by these electrical shocks. So stress responses, stress stimulates a hormone called cortisol, and cortisol's main job is to increase blood sugar. So under a stress response, whether you're a lab rat or day-to-day -day stressors, if you don't manage them properly, you can get a lot of blood sugar coming into your body just from that. So stress is one, component of blood sugar coming into your body. And then the other one that we're all aware of is that's more the foods. So we're gonna talk more about the foods here today. But, but those are the two areas that, that, that blood sugar comes from. Now, most of us know that as long as we, you know, as long as we avoid sweets, that's where diabetes come from. Not necessarily. There's other foods that do similar, that create similar problems that a lot of people overlook. And this, is, this comes down to mostly our modern day grains. And this is, this is in our flours and, and our baking and our breads and our cereals, all of this. Like white flour, white wheat flour, wheat flour elevates blood sugar higher than table sugar does and stays, and your blood sugar stays longer elevated than what table sugar does. So if, if, you know, if I was sitting across the table from a diabetic and, and I'm supposed to give them the best choice of what to eat and there's only, I don't know, breads and table sugar, I would actually tell them consume the table sugar before the breads because our modern day grains are, is literally sugar. So with that being said, some of the, the biggest impact people can have on their blood sugar is to avoid processed grains. In fact, for a period of time, avoid all grains. So here's something you can do. Um, one thing that you could do is avoid all grains. Just try this, 30 days. Just 30 days, avoid all, you know, test your blood sugar before, and if you have diabetes or prediabetes, you're probably following it. Um, but know your blood sugar when you start your 30-day effort, and then avoid all grains. Just avoid all grains, all processed foods, all artificial sweeteners, because those are absolutely terrible, and also natural sweeteners that are processed, like stevia and... and and, and all, those other, <laughs> all those other things, because they still bring up blood sugar, but just maybe not as much. So if you, if you avoid processed foods, eat real food, and avoid grains for 30 days, you're gonna see your blood sugar come down a lot. Now this will work for diabetics or, or, or you know, type one or type two. If you're a type one, you gotta be careful because you're probably on insulin already. And your insulin dose is, is dialed in at your specific diet. So if you eat, eat a diet that's not gonna spike your blood sugar, that's gonna bring your blood sugar down, with the insulin, your blood sugar could get too low. But you know, talk to your doctor about this, tell them what you're up, what you're doing. Because I work with lots of diabetics and we actually gotta be careful because lifestyle is powerful. And that's coming from someone who has had diabetes. In school, lots of stress, not very good foods. In two years, I went from a pre-diabetic to a diabetic. So I, I've been in the trenches. I, I, I know what happens here. So, um, so that's a, a very good challenge. But there's another thing that you could try as well. Um, 
after 30 days, you're on the roll and you want, and you, if things are coming down, you're very confident. I would, I would recommend trying to remove one meal per day. And I would say it's the first meal of the day, your breakfast or lunch. If you remove either one of those, what happens is you create gaps between meals and your body can start tapping into your blood sugar. Your insulin receptors start to get a little bit sharper, allowing your sugar to get into your bloodstream or into your cell, I should say, at, at, a, uh, at a better rate so it can bring your blood sugar down. So 30 days, follow the dietary routine, and then, and then after 30 days, try to do an, that in, what we call an intermittent fast. And, uh, and if you can't do it right away and you can't skip breakfast or lunch, that's too much, just try to reduce the quantity of it. And with time, you should be, with these healthy foods, you should be able to cr skip a meal, and that's when you're gonna see the magic where your blood sugar really comes down. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment, I'll answer it. And uh, I look forward to talking to you the next day where we're going to answer the why to another health related question. And there's a sister channel I do with my colleague called uh, Brainstorming with the Docs. And we have two, two episodes. All we do is talk about diabetes. I'll put the links in the description as well. And hopefully they're helpful. So anyway, I look forward to talking to you next day. And good luck with the 30-day challenge.